to Copperhead Customs. Today, we are back on this, our 1948 Bedford Hot Wheels Legends Tour $2,000 Australian budget build. And today, we've got heaps happening, stuff you've been waiting for. So stick around to see what it is. So yes, as stated, this is our 1948 Bedford that we are attempting to build for $2,000. Yes, that's right. We're attempting to build this for $2,000. Then we will enter it into next year's Hot Wheels Legends Tour. 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 And this little truck has come a long way since we started it a few months ago. First, we gave it a six inch haircut we also did this gorgeous looking three pearlescent clear coat paint that changes color we then mounted it to a holden wb panel van chassis but we chopped two foot out of the middle eight inches off the back and eight inches off the front, back to the front. we made this drop dead gorgeous tray and running boards out of an old pallet. We Frenched in these tail lights into one of the original pieces of wood, stainless truck guards, and check these stainless miniature West Coast mirrors. And on the inside, we've got office chairs for seats, a bamboo fence, old advertisement signs, a wooden floor, and an old shovel. And hey, don't forget, it's still full of bullet holes because it was used on the paddock where it come from by the farmer's kids as target bait. And check out these headlights. They're dog dishes. <laughs> That's what we did last episode, and in this episode, in this episode, we've got boxes and boxes and boxes of new parts to install. And don't forget, we've still got this bike to build, to match, the truck to go on the back. So if any of that sounded like it was semi-interesting, you should stick around and see where we take this Bedford in the next few months. But be assured, it's going to be a real little head turn. So with all that said, let's get in to what we're going to do today. So yes, as I just stated, we're going to do something that you guys are all hanging for, same as me. I'm hanging to do it as well, because we're going to finally see what the front of this thing is going to look like when we have lowered it. But before we get to that, we've got to rebuild all the front suspension. So we've got some rear shockies and rear leaf spring shackles here. We've got inner and outer tie rods. Apparently, we've got to check that out. We've got upper control arm bushes, sway bar bushes, lower control arm bushes lower control arm ball joints upper control arm ball joints a pitman arm i think that's called cool. and i think these are sway bar bushes i think i bought two sets of them by mistake here we have brand spanking new radiator and thermo fan which is actually for a v8 chev to suit a 32 ford i think but from my measures measures from my measures that should work pretty good in here by the time we make some little brackets on the sides some little tabs to mount up hopefully we can get it we may have to trim in on that a little bit but we fingers crossed can fit it all in without doing too many modifications so we'll get to that when we get to that who knows if it will be in this one or not but our main concern is going to be all of this stuff here through the front end and we will while we have it all apart we're going to chop up our springs and see if what height we get this to whatever height we want later on we'll probably order some springs but i don't want to spend 200 dollars on it one at the moment because of our budget but two until we work out exactly how low we want the front so we're going to probably chop one and a half to one and three quarter coils i think out of it pretty sure if you chop two coils it will nearly be solid bump stop so that's too much one and a half coils is basically what we did on the other bedford up the top and it still gives you pretty good suspension travel but lowers it a fair bit so i don't think we're ever going to get this one as low as the other one because of the fact that we shortened the chassis it seems to have with the rear i don't know this is something that means it's popping it up a little bit higher so with all that said i think our first step will be we'll get the jack under the center cross member we'll get the front wheels off we'll get some jack stands under it and we'll start tearing all of this apart now these holden front ends are quite painful they're probably very similar to the american gm front ends very very similar indeed now this is the wb chassis which is an 80 i think this one's an 83 basically 79 to 80 85 i think ran this chassis to this so this has the radial tuned front suspension so i'm not quite sure what the difference is we will then get it all torn down all the old bushes etc out all the old the old ball joints out they're generally 
pressed in with studs which have to be chopped etc once they're all cleaned up and out we will then paint the new control arms and then we will reinstall all the new stuff touch up any scratches rebolt it all back together looking beautiful oh, a couple of days beautiful so something else is here's our if you've been watching you would have seen that our extractors were no good these are the new set we bought a set of genies so they have to have a the end chopped the wheel chopped off and a flange put on i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this off i think i can unbolt that i'm either going to paint that shine it back up or paint that gold i was thinking maybe paint that gold and once the flange is on we want to paint them in we have black ceramic coat paint so we're going to paint them up so we'll see how we go of what we actually get we've got them we've got the radiator there'll be little bonuses if we get to it and have the time but our main job is to get the front suspension all rebuilt and lowered and then we should see what little stubby ben is going to look like in its glory because at that point it's going to look fat wide angry short and stout like a weightlifting elf as my american friend says so at any rate enough talking let's get the car jacked up stands under it and get some work done Oakley Doakley we're back as you can see we have one side all stripped down we have to throw a bit of paint in there a bit of a wire brush and paint we still haven't taken off the sway bar or the steering components as we got to undo this and this from this side so we'll get that off later and we haven't done this side over here yet that was I will say a bit of a bear they were all very very tight nothing wanted to come off seriously that had not been broken down if ever now if you look at this our top control arm that there as you can see they're studs so they are the original ball joints see their studs both sides they're the original ball joints that came with that arm so they're probably the from 1985 so if they are i'd say these bushes would be original same with these and more than likely this so this is gonna be fun to pull apart so as you can see everything's gunked up caked up so the plan now is we'll start trying to tear these down we'll get them cleaned up wire brushed we'll then paint them reassemble them we'll do that with each component the brakes are going to stay off as you can see we need pads so we'll give them a good clean uh, grease we'll get new pads we'll get the push pistons pushed back all of that good stuff here's our springs we're going to just chop a little bit off of these same with our discs we'll probably get the uh, air little air sander on there and just give them a light little sand up and we'll repaint all of this we'll clean all the old bearings out now i haven't bought new ones i do have bearings in the cupboard for one of these we'll have a look at what the condition of the bearings but generally gen, genuinely the bearings are pretty good and these are generally good brand ones which are probably better than the china 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 that's right the china ones that you buy now aren't much chopped so if the old ones are good we will just re-grease them so we'll get to all of that later 
So our next step, like I said, is let's start trying to press all of this stuff apart, tear all these down. One thing you will need though is ball joint kit. It's a ball joint kit to undo your ball joints. So basically these three here are the three we used to get it off. Now you can sit there and flog your guts out, hitting them and heating them and carrying on. But honestly, just go buy a kit. It's only 80, 50, 80, 100 bucks something. And then you will need this. So this is a ball joint remover so this is to get press these out press these bushes out so this is what you will need but you may need to make up some extra little sleeves etc to get it done so this can be used multiple ways and you'll see it's all trial and error you'll figure it out enough talking let's tear all of this apart Oakley we're back as you've seen they all come apart pretty easily like I've said with the kit it's all pretty easy you just need a couple of little bushes some random little bits of metal to just help with the push pulls on a couple of them and basically they're all all the bits are pretty much there you just got to think about which one to put where and whatever if you picked up what I did well and good but I've already forgotten and I'll have to work it out on the other side again but it's not hard it's just it's got to work out which way you want to push it and then Put the spaces on to suit now we cut two coils off for the spring yes fingers crossed so we stuck it on the bench and actually measured it and two coils is approximately three inches by the time you get a bit of extra sag because you've got a smaller spring as well we've probably dropped it who knows anywhere from three to four inches you would think and that will be heaps <laughs> probably too much maybe who knows but i think i think we'll try to get away with it we can always shave a bit of the bump rubber as well if we need so they've all been cleaned as i e scrape all the grease scraped off and hit with the degreaser the next step will be the 
wire brush on the grinder to that to them we'll then paint them and then we will put all our new pieces in like i said our calipers we're not going to put back on for now i've got to order some pads and some new lines so we will just leave them to the side for now and then we'll refurb them we'll think about a color for them whether we paint them the gold or whether we just paint them black i don't know if we want to get too excited painting i'm not really into the colored caliper brigade personally it's not my department that's not my department at any rate so hopefully you've gathered a bit from there today's sunday and i've had enough it's just got humid because it's just rained so we've got to go and get some groceries from the shop so i think that will do me today and i will see you tomorrow Oakley, Oakley, there's all our hearts. They've been scraped, degreased, wire brushed, then painted. And they're looking pretty nice, as you can see. So we did them in gloss black. It's our spring. There's our drop link bush. We got our top uh, upper control arm mount, our steering mount, and our knuckle. And we've done our disc brake. We actually sanded the face up painted all the rest and we've got our bearings in some chain and brake clean we've got to give them a scrub to get all the yucky grease out and then we've got to grab our bolts and take them put them on the wire brush and then we'll throw them in a tub of um, inox wd-40 whatever you use i use inox and if you haven't tried it go try it because it is the best one out there so i've got a jar of that in the shed next to the bench grinder and I'll do my bolts and then I'll just throw them in in that tub for a minute or two and then they come out all lubed up and protected and beautiful and the threads work a treat and all that so we've got a few pieces in there to do as well so we'll do that in a minute so our next thing is we'll give this probably another 20 minutes I'll go inside have a drink then we will start putting our pieces back in our bushes and ball joints and we'll rebuild each component and then we will put them on the car and get one side done we also quickly have to just shoot a bit of paint in there Okay, so we've pretty much got one side done if we come down here and it looks beautiful. So we end up with about a 20 mil bump stop clearance when it is fully up. So one thing that you do do and do remember to do guys is before you do these up up the top here on our top control arm, the two major nuts, and before you do the lower control arm bolt up, Get it all in, put the jack under this, and lift the jack until the car starts to come off of the stands. Then 
tighten those up fully and these up fully and then let it down and that way the suspension bushes are loaded up at ride height from the looks of it when it was jacked up it was sitting up about here i think this spindle was it's going to be low so we still have to put our disc brake disc on which is sitting there i've just got to finish cleaning the bearings they're in their brake clean container over here soaking so we've got to just hit them with the toothbrush in the morning repack them and then quickly slide this on and that's what's pretty well done by the steering of course but we'll get onto that so i think that looks pretty nice and neat hey not bad remembering this is a two thousand dollar build now what we did find was on our shockies now the shock seems okay but if you can see the bottom rubber down there it's pretty well flogged out so i just ordered another set of them so we'll probably just finish this off without the shocks in i'd say so i've ordered a set of them i actually ordered lowered shocks now right, it weren't very dear 80 dollars or something silly we also got some new flexi brake lines for the front and i got brake pads on order so for our calipers so they won't be here till later on in the week i think we're happy with that side tomorrow i've got to go do some whipper sniffering now so tomorrow we will get onto the other side We'll try to have a big day tomorrow. Although tomorrow I've got the these things and this one, the elbows tomorrow. So um, we'll see what we can get done. We'll try to get that other side at least finished tomorrow. And then that means we can just do the steering. And I still want to try to do a couple of other jobs. So anyway, enough said. I will see you in the morning. Okay, so... We are back, it is the next day in the afternoon. And as you can see, we've got this side all done. No steering arms as yet, no caliper, of course. We've just got to put our dust cover on, bearings all repacked with grease. Just need to wipe a bit of that grease off there we got on there. Painted the edge here and we painted the face. So I think that looks pretty nice and neat. And we have torn all the other side apart. As you can see on the other side, nothing in there. We've taken the pitman arm, I think it is, and all the steering off there as well to clean up. And we've got all our other pieces here ready for us to pull all the bearings and bushes out. So let's do that.
Okay, dokely. Well, as you can see, I'm all pegged up. So, we have still got the steering mechanism to do. We've done the disc brake caliper. We just got to sand the actual rotor itself. We've got the spring chopped and done. We've torn apart the upper and the lower. They've all been cleaned, scraped, prepped, wire brushed and painted. And we've got the uh, spindle steering arm and the other part of the lower. The lower gave me some grief. I forgot how to do it. So anyway, but we got it done. So as you can see, it's well, for you guys, it doesn't look dark, but it is just about pitch black. So, with that said, that's me done. Time for a shower. I will see you tomorrow. Oakley Doakley, we are back and we've been quite busy off camera doing lots and lots of stuff. So, there you can see our other side is all done. We'll shine some light on the situation for you. And we've painted the underneath of the guard, just gave it a little spritz. Now we've painted the sway bar and done all the sway bar bushes and new bushes in there as well. New steering arms, all the steering components have been pulled off. We'll get under there in a minute and show you that. But as you can see, it all looks pretty nice in here. So it's all done up. So like I've said, when you do these top bolts up here and these bottom control arm bolts that are down there, make sure you jack up your lower control arm, get the car to basically ride height before you tighten them up. And make sure everything else is tight. Now, when you do your nut behind here, do it up tight and then back it off to get your split pin in. So basically a quarter of a turn back off. But do it up as tight as you can to get until this is stopped moving. So you can't move it. That way the bearings seat in position. Then you back it off, say, uh, an eighth to a quarter of a turn so that this turns for it nicely and you can get your split pin in so pretty simple stuff and if we will endeavor to lay down and go under the front here i'll show you this we'll get our little little mat down so we're basically i think we've finished the front now well what we're doing at this point until we get some other bits in so as you can see here we've done our sway bar bushes are all new and the drop link bushes in there have all been replaced but our sway bar bushes and we've taken that out and painted it and we've taken all this out and cleaned it and painted it and new steering arm inner and outer tie rods so as you can see the front end is looking pretty nice not bad for a two thousand dollar build with that said what we have to do is put our spaces back on put our wheels on and then, and then, and then, and then I think we'll drop it off the jacks. Now, we have our disc brake pads in, but we're running out of time to do the, the calipers. So we'll do them next week. We'll clean the calipers really nicely, and we'll paint them up. And by then, the lines will be in. I've ordered new hoses. So by then, the hoses will be in as well. So next week, we'll put, we'll refurbish the calipers, and the lines, and I've ordered some other stuff. Oh, they've ordered the exhaust gasket, so we might as well wait until that arrives before we do the exhaust. So next week we'll do the exhaust, and we'll do 
finish the brakes here and we'll jump in under the front and also next week our shocks should have arrived if you haven't noticed we haven't got our shocks in yet our new shocks should have arrived we'll quickly throw them in uh, yeah so i think that's the plan next week is we'll continue with all this mechanical malarkey and we'll just get as much of it done as we can next week we've got rear shocks still to put on we've got rear shackles to put on we've also got our fuel tank to get in there and mount fabricating we've got a battery box i've come up with an idea you have to stick around for that in another but i've come up with a pretty i think it's not a bad idea for the battery and but back to the front, back to the front. we have to get our radiator mounted as well so we've just run out of time for all these things in this one but we're still going so can't leave it leave you with it hanging literally <laughs> so yes we'll get the spacers on we'll get the wheels back on we'll get it off the jacks we'll stick the nose cone back on we'll give it a bounce to get the springs to settle and then i think we'll push it out there and we'll have a look at what stubby ben looks like because I think it's going to look wicked. That looks wicked. You can see our guards are too low. We've got to trim the bottom of our guards. We're always going to do that. And then we'll work out what we want to do at the back here. But check out that for stance. Seriously, it's completely changed the car. And how angry does it look? Now, that looks... <laughs> that looks like a little Hot Wheels truck. Doesn't it? Jacked up in the back, big fatties, slammed in the front, angry, chopped, wooden tray. This thing is magnificent. Seriously. And you know what? We're building this for two grand. It looks so cool. This thing looks, looks so cool. I am so 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 happy with how this is turning out how angry does it look so it looks cool there but when you come here look at that that looks wicked and when you come back here that angle there is just ridiculous that looks ridiculous but we'll come around to the front I'll show you from the front. It looks so aggressive from the front. 
boy. Come on. Imagine seeing that Peltland down the road at you with all its ripped up and dents and Hey, this this thing This thing is bad Bad a double five Really that car is ridiculous So we didn't get a whole well we did a lot of work but not a lot of video on this because it's pretty tedious doing front suspension but we now have completely pretty much rebuilt front suspension just waiting on a couple of pieces like i've said to finish the brakes and the shocks and then the whole front end is basically rebuilt bushes rubbers ball joints all that good stuff that just looks so cool so good i'm so happy with it drop your comments drop your comments on this how cool. i think i think this is the best looking budget build on youtube I know there's a lot of budget builds and whatever. Some of them are a bit rough and ready and what's the word? Agricultural. Remembering we're doing this with all good suspension and all the brakes are all going to be new and all that as well. We're going to pull this off and that's $2,000 Australian, which is not a lot of money. US conversion is $1,200 converted, but that's just on the financial conversions. What you can get for $1,200 compared to what I could get for $2,000 is you'll get twice as much stuff. So it's actually even less. It's less than $1,000 US that I'm building this for. Drop your thoughts, comments. Tell me what you think. Hey? And with all that, I'm pretty happy. And I'll say thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you next week.